I recently was at the barber shop and I came across the Entertainment Weekly's promo run for the uh, Avengers Endgame movie. Yes, I know it's an old magazine, but the cover on this magazine was so phenomenal uh, that I just wanted to give it a shot. It had some very distinctive cross key lighting that I was like, wow, that looks really cool. I later found out that the photographer that executed these series of portraits was Marco Grob. I hope I am saying his name right, Grob. But check him out, he's amazing. I'll put a link down below. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to let you know when I uh, post new videos. I will be posting once a week, see how it goes, and hopefully I'll ramp up from there. But let's go ahead and unravel or deconstruct this portrait. All right, so here we are inside of lightingdiagram.com. This website's great if you want to lay out some uh, rough ideas of where you're going to be putting your lights in relation to your subject. Um, so I'm going to put a background back here. This is what the background that I'm going to be using, a five-in-one background. Then I'm going to take my softbox and rotate it, put it there, grab another softbox, and that's pretty much what we're gonna go for. Now, if you want something a little bit more responsive, you could use a website called the Virtual Light Studio. I'll leave the link down below. And the great thing about this is that you can use as many as six lights. Here, I'm gonna use uh, three lights, and that's basically what it looks like. This uh, website is great for um, visualizing, pre-visualizing before you bring out all the equipment. It's actually a lot of fun to play around with on its own but let's go back to the studio and see what we got going on there before i get started i want to give a big shout out to marco grob ever since i found his work i've just been feeling like man i want to be that good and that's the whole point of this particular video where i'm using his uh, entertainment weekly avengers cover as inspiration to do this self-portrait I'm running continuous lights and I'll be talking to you guys about that particular setup. And that tether setup is going to a Sony application that has made this entire process super smooth for me. Now down below, I have the link to the equipment that I'm using as well as that application. If you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas, that you wanna share with me, please comment down below and I'll be sure to read them. I can't wait to interact with you guys. This is a new endeavor for me and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So with that in mind, let's get into my setup here. I was going to use soft boxes, but it wasn't giving me the punch that I needed and what I ended up doing was switching out. I have two SL60W flanking me. Yes, those are my flags. So basically what I ended up doing was I ended up going with hard light and I needed to flag them and I didn't have any flags. So what I ended up doing was using some cardboard and taping it. You cannot do this with uh, hot lights. I have a video coming out, a review on this particular light and why I decided to go with this light versus something comparable. So I balanced the light with some C-stands. So this is the Kino Flow on the center light with the louver taken down. And here is my tethering. There's my camera. And here is the application that I was using. So for remote, you simply go on there at the link that I have provided at the bottom and you choose whether you have Windows or Mac and install. So there you go, uh, Imaging Edge by uh, Sony. So welcome to the inside of the program called remote. This is the program that I'm using to make this whole process just super smooth for me. As you can see up here, you can see that the 6500 is connected. We are live right here. Gives you the battery. Um, as you can see from the main settings here, you can change the shutter, the f-stop, ISO. You can add 
compensation. There's sub settings for a raw aspect ratio. It even simulates as if you were pressing it halfway. Um, so for example, if I get out of the way, it'll focus on the background. And now I'm out of focus. But what you'll see now, I'll press the uh, automatic focus and it'll focus on my face. Let's hit that again. And there I am in focus. And when I'm ready to take the picture, I can just go ahead and hit the shutter release. So now we've reached that point where we're going to take a look at the final image that I chose to make it as the magazine cover. So for that, we need to go to my laptop. So here's the chosen picture right out of the camera. And here is the process picture um, that would go on the cover. As you can see, the background has been blocked out and I've color corrected it to make it uh, black and white. I also have another variation in color. And here's the picture set onto the layout of the magazine. Now, just for comparison, here are the two images side by side, my effort and the comparison of the original weekly entertainment weekly cover. So my final thoughts are that I really like the way the image came out and I like the results if I do say so myself. If I had to do some things differently, I probably would have used a strip light, uh, a strip um, soft box that's about 12 by 55 on either side with no baffle. And I probably would have used a larger source right in front of me. Uh, but other than that, that's about it. Now, if you found the content to be something that you uh, enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications on when I upload my next video. I'll be uploading about once a week and hopefully you guys can join me. I will see you guys next time. Till then, keep shooting.